If you're an Amazon seller and you're wanting to message your past customers and ask for a review, then you gotta keep watching this video because I'm about to be talking with Troy from Seller Tools and we're gonna be showing you a way that you can basically send your past Amazon customers an Amazon branded email it's basically asking for a review. It's completely automated and it is super TOS compliant. So this is a really cool new feature that Seller Tools just dropped. So you're gonna wanna keep watching this video. So let's go ahead and jump into it, starting with introducing you to Troy. What's up, Troy? Hey Ian, glad to be joining you. Excited to be talking about automating reviews, TOS friendly fashion. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a dream for Amazon sellers. You always want to do things uh, on the up and up if you can on those important things, ranking and reviews, and where we can automate it, click a few buttons. Uh, it's about 60 seconds to set up as we'll touch on. Um, and then you can let the machine run and, and gobble up Amazon reviews. Yeah, I agree. I'm pretty excited about this feature. I think this is going to be a game changer for sure. So let me tell you who I am. My name is Ian Smith and I run an Amazon marketing agency called Evolve Media. We work with a ton of Amazon sellers and we help them with running Amazon PPC, Facebook ads, Google ads, building out messenger bots, doing email marketing. So if you want to book a free consulting call with me to help me to help me understand your business, talk about some strategies and basically figure out how we can help your Amazon uh, increase your rankings, get more reviews and overall increase your revenue, then book a free consulting consulting call with me by heading over to evolvemedia.agency. Okay, so let's jump into it. Troy, go ahead and share your screen and show us how to actually set up this, uh, you know, buyer-seller type of messaging. I know that that was a, a past term, so let's let's actually talk about, you know, what's the difference between the old buyer-seller messaging and this new feature? Yeah, so buyer-seller messaging, it integrates with Seller Central and it's what sellers are accustomed to sending uh, messages to customers, whether it is post-purchase, whether it's support, and uh, it's fallen out of favor considerably uh, because there has been so many customers that have, um, I'm one of them, that have opted out of receiving buyer-seller messaging at all. It can be very spammy. Uh, it's been around for so long that there's this long history of uh, not a strong likelihood of customers getting those emails, opening those emails, interacting with them. And so it really shows its age as a, as a effective strategy and one that we, uh, in many of our brands, don't even use at all. So it's kind of indicative of if your hope is to capture reviews or lead it, uh, use a strategy like that in a tool such as buyer seller messaging, it's really sort of ineffective. It's, but it's how is this different where, now? How is this new system different than that old system? Yeah, it's really a reset in many ways of a buyer seller messaging where you have a Amazon branded email in a TOS compliant fashion explicitly requesting reviews. And uh, what's really, again, elegant about this is that it's truly automated. It is something where you you can click a button, set a few preference filters, and then let those Amazon emails land in uh, inboxes that have, again, may, ha may have already previously opted out, but these are a fresh batch of emails to your customers um, that you can send right away. Well, go ahead and share your screen and let's go ahead and take a look at how to actually set this up inside Seller Tools. Awesome. Yeah, excited to do it. So where can you find this and what is this feature's name? It is called Review Request and you can find it in your Seller.Tools account easily in the navigation. And once you have access to it, it's immensely straightforward and intentionally so. Again, as I mentioned, when you click a few buttons and it's on, that's really the spirit of what we wanted to do. So first and foremost, we want to turn this feature on from disabled to enabled and then the machine can start running and once that happens you can then start monitoring the re the uh, reviews the requests that you have sent so if we take a look at this account this is a fairly new account we can then monitor how many reviews are automatically being sent you can even see kind of a, a date and timestamp here of when it started when it started running and when i had to do absolutely nothing for amazon emails to go out to my customers and request uh, request reviews. So a really great place to be able to monitor that activity, uh, see the performance and changes over time as those requests are being sent out. Yeah, no, I think now, it's Ian, really if you cool. Would, yeah, so what is this whole global matching rules? Those sound uh, pretty spiffy. Yeah, so this is a way in which you can dictate rules. Let's say you wanted to filter down the uh, number of requests that go out, the type of requests that go out for uh, for your customers. And this is where you can uh, filter that down. So whether you would like to change uh, fulfillment channel, if we want to run both FBA, FBM, or uh, a combination of the two, we can customize that. We can use these exclusion filters 
to then limit the types of review requests we don't want to send. So let's say as an example, this is one on this account I've made sure to select, where seller feedback, we've already received seller feedback that is three stars or less, and we can of course select any one of those, but there's a probably a, a good indication that if somebody has left um, three stars or less in their seller feedback, their review is probably something you don't want to live on your Amazon listing. So we can set those filters. Uh, this is a not so small uh, way to customize and tailor, uh, filter down the review request that we send. So we've got those added. And anytime you do that, you will see your filters applied right here. And because these are global matching rules, it's gonna be rules applied to all of your products uh, within that credential, within that account. Right, Troy, let me ask you a quick question. As far as the um, level, the uh, subscription level that they need to have with seller tools, is this across all subscriptions or which levels is this you know, available? That's a great question. Uh, so we know this is very powerful for a tool to literally do all the heavy lifting for you. Um, it is actually available on our lowest tier plan, nice. the $57 a month plan through, uh, through the light uh, package. So uh, even if you're just starting out, you're thinking, I need to just obsess over ranking and reviews. I should actually spend my time doing that. The beauty of this is we're saving the time. You're still getting the objective of uh, what your business disproportionately should be focused on, capturing more reviews, social proof, um, ending up in, in customers' inboxes, and then and them sharing that great feedback. We know how valuable that is. I mean, to quantify in the price uh, or the the dollar number associated with the review, we were re we really were intentional. We wanted it to be a no brainer for sellers. If a, a review is worth a single review is worth fifty, sixty, seventy five dollars as you grow your business, it can be it can be worth even more. Uh, but to be able to turn it on and have this running for you kind of at that same price of a single review is is really kind of was kind of the point uh, where we yeah. landed for the availability. And one thing to know if you guys don't know as an Amazon seller, you know, reviews don't actually help your ranking, it indirectly helps your ranking. So let's say that you got a bunch of reviews, that's going to help your listings conversion rate, right? And then the higher your conversion rate, then the better your ranking. So just something to keep in mind. Yep, absolutely. Traffic and conversions, right? This is on that conversion side where when people get in, they want the social proof. They want to see people loving your product. Yeah. Um, and ideally, we get those folks automatically. So we can set then again, a few of the other filters we can take a look at. So if we want to limit any uh, promotions, subscribe and save discounts, shipping discounts applied to orders, we can exclude those in our filters. Buyer type, if you have B2B, B2C, and you'd like to limit uh, those different customers, the purchase count, again, this is at the global level. So let's say you wanted to exclude orders that um, weren't purchased uh, a certain number of times. You can set this at the global level. I'm gonna show you a feature a little bit further down where you can do this at the product level, which I generally recommend. Depends how many products you have in your account uh, in your unique circumstance, of course, but you can limit the number of, of um, requests that go out based on customer purchases. So when you say global level, basically like if they bought two different ASINs then that would be global versus when you say product level, is that like the same ASIN or explain that a little bit? Yep, you're, you're spot on. So let's say they bought two different SKUs in a, uh, and you, you carry 10 SKUs, that rule is gonna be applied differently than when we get down to the product level, which is at the SKU level where it looks at, okay, did they buy two of one SKU versus two of one is SKU one and one gotcha. is SKU two. Okay. Yeah. So you can set that rule here. At the global level, you can isolate those orders with returns and refunds. You can see I've already got that set here because again, it's very similar to seller feedback. Somebody's returning your product, refunding it. What's the likelihood that uh, they're going to um, share, share something as useful, let's say, or as beneficial in that review process? And that's com again, completely up to you as to you how you set and dictate those rules. Now, when then we have checked wallet when, when you show that they're checked, does that mean that you are including people that have asked for review, returns and refunds or? These are, so these are exclusion filters. So these are anything that we wanna set that we would exclude then on those requests. And then you'll always wanna make sure this is kind of your running list here is if you start tallying up a number of filters, this is where you can refer back, always remove these as needed. Gonna keep some of these because these are really powerful and effective. But then you can then see, I don't want any refunds, re return orders, or less than seller, seller feedback requests to go out uh, automatically. And now that we've gone over in the global matching rules, let's take a look at the product matching rules. 
And as this implies, this is sort of the level down where instead of at the count level, we're looking at specific SKUs and ASINs. And we are saying, again, depending on, on how many are in our account, we can monitor those here. And then we can actually configure the uh, re repeat count, again, at the ASIN level. So the number of purchases uh, of a specific SKU and how much, um, and if we would then like to request a review. If a customer, if they have to buy two of our product to receive a uh, review request, we can set that at the repeat count. And when would you use that? That is a really cool one because obviously if they bought the product twice or three times, they're more likely to leave a better review, right? So um, this brings up a question, Troy. So does this, like if you turn this on today, is this going to start moving forward with orders coming in moving forward or does it do any kind of backdating like orders that happened in the past? It can, it can go back and you'll actually notice here where it, would, it spiked for my initial when I turned this on, uh, which is great. I love 17 automatic review requests, but it will trigger and send then based on your sales volume, as well as, as we'll uh, touch on a little bit further down, the rule that you set for the timing. So there is a, a delivery window timing from which the product is delivered and then some subsequent dates, how far back you want to wait. So that's, that's another customization we can make in this uh, review request in the filters. Okay. Cool. So if we scroll down and in right, you're spot on in terms of this point. So as an example, in this account, we had brand new product. We were not 100% sure. We thought we had a great product. It wasn't a commoditized product, something unique but we're not 100% sure. So maybe we're gonna be more careful and say, hey, the people that come back twice and you know, kind of vote with their dollars, those might be some of the best people to request reviews from. And you can dictate that here again at the product level. This will then override the global level, uh, as you can imagine, right? If you set something here that says, okay, for this specific, specific product, here's the criteria I set, uh, that will be what is put in place. Send request is already on and we are absolutely good to go. Um, and you can manage this again easily as you add even more SKUs, ASINs that you want to automatically request reviews for. Awesome. Anything else that we need to cover before we wrap up? The last thing is being able to then schedule those actions is when you touched on how you, uh, the timing in which you request reviews, you can actually customize that between the time of the day as well as the days of uh, after delivery. Now, Amazon dictates kind of what this range can be, but it's pretty wide. It's five between five and 30 days. Keep in mind, this is post delivery. So that's a customer seeing a product at their doorstep um, and then uh, the number of days after. So this would be five days after that product, that package uh, ending up at your customer's door uh, doorstep. So kind of cool to be able to customize that too, because then you can think about, again, when does my customer get the greatest benefit from my product? Does it take a little bit more time? Am I selling maybe a supplement? I don't, I, the immediacy of that request may fall flat. Is it something where they get an immediate benefit? We want to get in front of them ASAP. Um, all of that is done automatically. And that's really the, the elegance of setting a few rules. You know, if I were to run through this and when I did it the first time, Ian, it was literally 60 seconds to turn this on, set a few rules as, as you can see there in filters, and then being ready to um, let Amazon, let Cello Tools do the work for me. That is so cool. Yeah. So you guys got to check out this feature in the Seller Tools. If you're not yet a member of Seller Tools or have a subscription, then seller.tools is where you need to go to sign up. Um, Troy, thank you so much for taking the time and walking us through how to set this up. And um, everybody that's watching, thank you so much for watching. Click that thumbs up button if you got value from this and we'll see you in the next one.